What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over Google Display Ad Strategy. So some different ways to use your targeting and different ways to create campaigns so you can make sure that you're getting the most out of your budget. Now the way I generally look at display campaigns is you can see here I have four different campaigns running. They're all display campaigns. These are just example tutorial type campaigns. But let's just say for example I'm running a remarketing campaign. I want to run a smart display campaign. I want to target some in-market and custom intent audiences. And then I want to run a Gmail campaign as well. I would separate all four of those out into their own campaigns. So the way I kind of look at it is when I'm targeting certain audiences like in-market and custom intent and even similar audiences, I'll generally put those into the same campaign, but I won't mix some of my other targeting like remarketing, even like affinity audiences if I'm using them into that campaign as well. So usually the way I look at it is if I'm using some of these targeting audiences and I want to keep them in the same campaign or I want to split them out, I just kind of look at what are my overall goals for that campaign. So if I'm running remarketing, generally what I want to do is drive as many leads, as many conversions, as many sales as possible within my budget. So I'll separate that out into its own campaign. It'll allows me to control the budget much better. Now, if I want to test a smart display campaign versus my own targeting using in-market and custom intent type audiences, generally what I would do is run both of those campaigns at the same time with the same exact budget for a set period of time and see what ends up driving me more conversions within my budget. Now, if you're targeting multiple audiences like in-market and custom intent in your campaign, I'll usually separate them into different ad groups. You don't have to do this. You can put multiple targeting groups in the same ad group. So then within each of these ad groups, I'll put a several custom intent audiences or several in-market audiences or just one. And that allows me to see the performance for each of these different types of targeting categories that I'm using. So if we come back over here and let's just say I'm setting up an ad group. So when you create a display ad group, it's going to look like this. So you're just going to have ad group name and then you can define who you want to reach. You can narrow it down with some content targeting as well. So just say you only want to show up on certain placements or for certain topics to make sure that you're reaching the right people at the right time. But let's just say we're using people. We come in here to audiences. Usually what I'll do is if I come over to browse here, Remarketing, I always separate into its own campaign. I rarely use any of the other targeting methods just because remarketing usually outperforms all of them by far. So I keep that in its own campaign so I can really control the budget and control what I'm getting out of it. Now, if I'm using in-market, life events, custom intent here, and similar audiences, I'll put those in the same campaign generally. With affinity and custom affinity and then detailed demographics, I truthfully don't target these very often. I don't usually see good performance from them. But if you are running ads for a large national brand, if you're running ads for a company with a large budget that's doing TV advertising and wants their display advertising to match that, that's where affinity and custom affinity would come in handy. And generally what I'll do with those is I'll separate them out into their own campaigns. And I just focus mainly on brand awareness, on reach, on trying to reach as many people as possible. Whereas with the other targeting methods, I usually use them to drive sales and leads, which is usually where the budgets that I manage are gonna be going towards. Most people aren't using their budget to drive brand awareness. It's pretty rare, honestly, unless you have a very very large advertiser with a massive budget that's always trying to drive new customers. So what I'll do is I'll separate out into ad groups. You don't have to do this. You can put it all into one ad group and then just look at your targeting in each ad group to see what's performing well, what's not getting enough impressions, and you can always pause specific targeting options. But I'll separate out into different ad groups. So we have in-market audiences here and I can choose, let's just say I'm choosing several different in-market audiences, maybe auto parts and accessories. We'll just use a couple of these options here. I would choose all my in-market audiences and put them in the same ad group. So you can see I have multiple audiences here, come down to the bottom, create my advertisement, create this ad group. So that's kind of a high level overview about how I look at strategy and organizing my campaigns. Now, when it comes to bids, what I would recommend doing is setting your bids as low as possible when you get started. So usually what I'll do is I'll set bids at 15 cents or less when I'm creating a campaign, especially when I'm targeting these custom intent audiences, in-market audiences, really anything that's not remarketing. I want to set my bids as low as possible to keep my CPC as low as possible. So even 30 cents here, I would try to get this down over time within this campaign. So what you want to do is start these bids low, see if you're hitting your daily budget and try to bid as low as possible to hit your daily budget. So you can drive as many clicks back to your website as possible. Then you're getting more people into your remarketing audiences and you can reach more people per day within the same exact budget.
and that goes the same with my budget. So you're gonna see here it's set at $10 per day. A lot of times I'll set my budget a little bit lower in the beginning so I can start to see what's performing better and then put more of my budget towards what's giving me the best performance. So in the very beginning for the first month or so, it's really just testing as much as possible. First several months you wanna test all these different audiences to see what's working best for you and keep these bids low, keep these budgets low because you can always increase them later. And higher bids just means you're paying more for clicks, you're paying more to get people to visit your website. And that doesn't always necessarily mean that the traffic is gonna be better performing. Now, what you can do over time is if we come over here to settings, you start driving some conversions for your campaign. If you come in here to bidding strategies, you're gonna see I have manual CPC, help increase conversions with enhanced CPC. If you start driving more and more conversions for your business, we can click on change bid strategy here. And what I generally do is I'll come down here to select a bid strategy directly. So we'll click on the drop down, get to a target CPA or get to a target return on ad spend, depending on if you're pulling in conversion value here. But if we're just doing conversions for our website, target CPA, let's say I wanna to try to drive conversions at $10 or less, then I would come in here, set a target CPA of $10, I'm paying for clicks, and then I would just click on save and set this as my new bid strategy. But ultimately what you wanna do, if we come back over here to ad groups, you just wanna set these bids really low, so I'll set these at 25 cents per right now, and I can always decrease them or increase them over time, depending on if I'm hitting this daily budget. So that's bidding, you wanna make sure that you're setting the right bids to get the most out of your budget. So if we come back over here to all campaigns, this is how I would set it up if I wanted to start doing some testing for a Gmail campaign, I wanna see how a smart display campaign performs, and then I wanna see how in-market custom intent, maybe similar audiences perform separately. So if we come up here to tools and settings and we come down to shared library, what we can look at are bid strategies, shared budgets, and you can even look at audience manager as well. I'm not gonna go through that as much in this video. If you're looking for more information about Google Display Advertising, I recommend checking out our Google Display Ads tutorials playlist. So you can see we have, we have a tutorial here, how to set up your first campaign, targeting options, how to create responsive display ads, and then a quick Q&A session where I answered five different questions, along with some display ad strategies that you can use as well. So coming back over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up bid strategies real quick and shared budgets. So one of the things you might wanna do is use a shared budget. So what you can do is just come in here, click on to create a new shared budget, name your budget, you can set a budget. So I can set it at $50 per day. And then I can add it to multiple campaigns. So I can come down here and add it to these campaigns. It will override the daily budget that I have set for them. So then what Google Ads will do is take that $50 budget and make sure that it's getting spent between these four campaigns. So that's one option you have if you have a certain daily budget and you want it to be split between different campaigns. You can also just do it manually. So you would just come in here and set your daily budget at something like 12.50 per day. And then between these four campaigns, we'd end up spending $50. But if you do wanna use a shared budget between several campaigns, this is the way to go about doing that. I don't use shared budgets too often. I generally just set separate budgets for each campaign. Now, the other thing you can do is you can come over here to bid strategies. So again, in tools and settings, under shared library, you're gonna see bid strategies. It'll open up a page that looks like this. So you can set the same bid strategy for multiple campaigns. So let's just say, for example, I wanna use a target CPA bid strategy. I want conversions at $10 or less. What I can do is select multiple campaigns here, set it for these campaigns, and then they're all gonna use the same bid strategy. I generally wouldn't do that. Maybe if you wanna do it with a remarketing campaign and try to do it with some of the other campaigns, it might make the most sense for something like in-market and custom intent and smart display since they're gonna be targeting audiences and it's gonna be not remarketing, you're not running on Gmail, you're essentially trying to target people who are on the Google Display Network that are gonna see your advertisements. So you're gonna see similar performance because it's not gonna be remarketing where people have already interacted with your business and been to your website or watch your YouTube videos or anything like that. So you could use the same bid strategy for multiple campaigns, especially something like this with a smart display campaign where Google Ads is going out and trying to find the best audiences for you or something like an in-market and custom intent campaign where you're choosing audiences and you're trying to find the most relevant audiences and the most ready to buy customers for your products and services. So with that being said, what we can do is we'll come back over here. Hopefully that makes some sense about how to organize your campaigns, how to organize your targeting. There's different ways to do it. I mean, you can put this all into one ad group. I like to separate them out because then you can control your max CPC here. It helps me control my budgets a little bit more. And if I do come into my campaign and see, okay, everything's coming right into this custom intent audience, 
even if the performance is great, you wanna test these in-market audiences, you can adjust your bids. So maybe you have to bid a little bit higher here, bid a little bit lower here, or you could just pause certain ad groups altogether for a period of time. I would recommend going the bids route, especially if you're seeing good performance. If you're seeing poor performance, then pause the low performing ad groups. See if you could find any of the better ad groups, if they can drive conversions or help you reach your goals at a lower cost. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna look at some different scenarios and different ways that I would organize my budget and I would recommend a, an advertiser who contacted me how to organize their budget as they got started with campaigns. So we're gonna start first, scenario one, let's say you have a budget completely focused on conversions. So this is what's gonna happen the most often, whether it's for your own business or a client contacts you and they say, I wanna drive as many conversions as possible at the lowest cost. So my example here is an e-commerce website that sells five to 10 fitness products. So what I would do is I would recommend going 100% remarketing. And the example I'm gonna use here, if we come over, so I found this website here, Gorilla Grips. So if we come down, they're selling seven total products. It's all related to hand grips, so people increasing their hand grip strength. So what I would recommend doing is running a remarketing ad. So if someone did visit the website, they didn't purchase something, I would try to run remarketing ads that either gave people a free shipping offer, maybe it gives them five, 10% off. It might be a little bit more difficult with lower price points, but what you can do is try to get people to come back to your website to purchase some of these products. It might be difficult with some of these lower price products here, like $12. So if you're driving clicks for 50 cents, then you're gonna need a really high conversion rate to end up driving a positive return on ad spend for your business. But what I would recommend doing for a business like this that's completely focused on driving revenue, on driving conversions, and brand awareness really doesn't matter all that much when you just have seven products. When you have a ton of products, you have a ton of locations that people can purchase things, your strategy will change. But for right now, what I would do is a budget completely focused on conversions. And let's just say it's an e-commerce website selling only so many products, just go completely into remarketing. And you probably wanna set up dynamic remarketing if you have different categories of products. So let's just say you have one category focused on hand grip strength, maybe you have another product category focused on abs, you have another one focused on legs or something else like that. We're just looking at fitness products here. Then you can use dynamic remarketing and say, this person looked at these different products. We want to send them targeted advertisements based on what they looked at. So you'll see a lot of dynamic remarketing ads. If you go on Amazon or you go on a website like Wayfair.com, you start looking at different products. You're going to start seeing ads with those exact products on those advertisements. So that's the best way to reach people who have shown an interest in your business. Get them to come back, maybe give them some type of offer like free shipping or a percentage discount. So when they do come back to your website, they actually purchase this time. So next we'll go with scenario number two. So let's just say you have a budget focused on both conversions and awareness. So my example here is a local plumbing and HVAC company that serves three counties. So getting awareness helps because there's gonna come time where someone needs plumbing services or they need air conditioning services. And if you're top of mind for that customer, they're just gonna call you first. So if they've seen your advertisement before, maybe they do a quick Google search, they see you at the top of Google, one of your Google ads is up there. They remember seeing some of your advertisements. So what I would recommend doing is splitting your budget, 34% remarketing, 33% in-market and custom intent audiences, and then 33% similar audiences. You can also throw similar just directly into this in-market portion. But what I would try to do is test some of these different audiences out because you can reach people who are currently in market for plumbing or HVAC services. Remarketing, you're gonna reach people who haven't converted already. Nobody really visits a local plumbing website unless you're having plumbing issues and you need them to be solved. So if someone does visit your website, they don't convert at all on your website, then send them advertisements and potentially send them some type of promotion that you're running on your own website. So we're gonna come back over here. Now the example I have for this one is arsmyrtlebeach.com. So you can see here they have featured specials. If we scroll down, you can see there's a bunch of different specials here. So I would use some of these specials in my advertising, save $50 off any heating or cooling repair. So get people back to your website, they see this offer, get them to contact you. So you can have contacts in different ways. So you have contact us down here, book now, phone number. They also have a live chat down here at the bottom. So what I would recommend doing is 
going into your Google Ads campaigns and I would split my budget. So remarketing, I would probably try to maximize my remarketing budget. So maybe if you're able to spend 50% on remarketing, if you do get enough traffic, then I would spend as much as possible. So for coming back over here to our budget split, try to get as much as possible in this remarketing. But if you're not able to, then I would say at least one third get into remarketing. And then the rest I would spend on in-market and custom intent audiences. And if we come back over here and we come back to our display ad group that we were building, we'll get rid of these two audiences that we have here. What you can do is just come over to search and just do a search here. So we'll do plumbing. And if we scroll down, you're gonna see some of these custom intent audiences that have been auto created. So what we can do is plumbing here, plumbing services, roto router services. So we can use all of these in the same ad group. And then what I would recommend doing is separating out your HVAC targeting into a completely separate ad group or even a completely separate campaign. So we would go through, set these audiences, come down, save this ad group. And then what I would do is create a new ad group. So we have our different ad group here. And for this one, let's just say we're targeting HVAC. So what we can do is just search right here, HVAC. So we'll click on enter and you're gonna see air conditioning services, HVAC services. So you can target all these different audiences in your campaign or create a completely separate campaign. Me personally, I would put them into the same campaign in separate ad groups because I wanna make sure that my advertisements are geared towards what people are looking for. And what you might find is, let's say we do HVAC here, you're seeing some custom intent audiences. What we can do is we can scroll down and you usually find some in-market audiences as well. So plumbing services, climate control appliances, electrician services. So just look for the in-market audience that works best for what people are looking for in that moment. If someone's in the market for an air conditioner, if someone's in the market for a plumbing service, then what you're gonna be able to do is reach them in real time as they're actually looking for the services or the products that you offer. And now the other thing you can do is let's just come over here to browse. So in this example, we're running remarketing campaigns. So if we come over here to our website visitors, you're gonna see some of these different website visitors. Obviously this is for my website, farmhousegoals.com. So it wouldn't be relevant at all to plumbing, but a plumbing website, anybody who's been to the website, I would say in the last 15 days, maybe you wanna make sure you're targeting them with your advertisements. And then you can use some of these similar audiences as well. So one of my favorite similar audiences to use is a converted audience because if someone is contacted, contacting you and converting on your website, and let's just say you get 200 conversions a month for people who are calling you, people who are filling out your form, booking your service through an appointment form on their website, then you can target a similar audience to the people who have converted. So it's gonna find people with similar interests, similar ages, similar, similar genders. So people who have similar habits online. So you can reach people in real time who are gonna be as close as possible to the people who are actually contacting you and reaching out to you to become one of your new customers. So coming back over here, this is scenario two, focused on conversions and awareness. I would recommend putting as much as possible into remarketing at least one third, and then I would put the rest into in-market, custom intent, and similar audiences, split out your targeting into different ad groups, and make sure if you're doing plumbing and HVAC, you separate that targeting as well. So for this one, I'd probably have six total ad groups. I would create a separate ad group for in-market HVAC, a separate ad group for in-market plumbing, and then the same thing for custom intent. So I would separate the ad groups based on what people are looking for, and then based on the targeting that I'm using. And over time, you're gonna learn what's gonna perform the best for your business. So I would put the majority of my budget in remarketing here and just hope that I can drive a lot of conversions that way for people who have visited my website and didn't convert the first time. Make sure they're aware of some of the specials you might be offering. So if we come back over here, make sure someone who visited looked at something related to air conditioning. You can see you have a cheap AC system check, maybe say $50 on any heating or cooling repair. So all of these different options here, you can start targeting them with some of your promotions if they visited your website and didn't convert yet. So now last but not least, let's say we have a budget focused on new offers and promotions. So this would probably be more for really large brands, large companies who are constantly running promotions and they wanna get their newest promotions and their newest deals in front of a targeted audience. So my example here would be a large national fast food company. How I would split this budget, I would only do about 10 to 20% remarketing. I would do a large portion of my budget in in-market custom intent and similar audiences. And then I would do a smaller portion of the budget into affinity audiences. So for this example, let's just say I'm promoting for Wendy's. So Wendy's recently came out with breakfast. 
So what I would recommend doing is if you have a new promotion, something brand new like Wendy's offering breakfast, what they want to do is alongside their TV advertising, they can come over here to create a display campaign and let's say we're creating our ad group. What I would recommend doing is targeting affinity audiences here and I would probably separate them out into their own campaign where I'm just focused on driving as many impressions as possible, low cost clicks, just to make sure that I'm reaching as many people as possible with this messaging for a small budget. So even if you're spending $100 per day, and for Wendy's, that's really not much at all. We can come in here to these affinity audiences, and you can see food and dining. We'll click on the drop down, fast food cravers. So we can target fast food cravers, frequently dines out. Maybe I want to do foodies. So we can target some of these different affinity audiences. And you're going to see the impressions over here, 10 billion plus impressions per week. So with a small budget, you're able to target a lot of people. People are going to have an interest in fast food, people who frequently dine out. And what we can also do is break it down frequently dines out. So we can scroll down here, diners by meal, frequently eats out breakfast. So maybe we just want to do frequently eats out breakfast, get rid of frequently dines out, get rid of foodies, fast food cravers, frequently eats breakfast. And we're sending them to a page about Wendy's newest breakfast picks. And then what you can do is you can use some of these in-market audiences. So let's just say we come to the Wendy's homepage. So one of the promotions they have right now, get free delivery at Wendy's on Grubhub and Postmates. So we keep scrolling down, free honey butter chicken biscuit with any breakfast purchase, keep scrolling down, $2 off one of their bacon, big bacon classic combo, keep coming down, $2 off their cod meal. So all these different things you can use in your promotions. And what I would do is I would separate it by who you are targeting. So if we come down here, remarketing, I always recommend using some type of promotion for remarketing. If someone did visit your website and they didn't convert, and in Wendy's case, if we come over here, they can track someone who creates a new account, someone who clicks to find a Wendy's, someone who goes to order online, someone who orders delivery, someone who starts an order here, someone who downloads an app on the App Store, downloads the app on the Google Play Store. So Wendy's is able to track all of these things. So what I would recommend doing is using remarketing to try to get people to your website, to get people to place an order then and there. But if someone's visiting your website and not converting, you still want to make sure they know about some of the promotions that you have. Now, in-market custom intent, similar audiences, going to be a little bit more difficult. There's not really an in-market audience for people who are currently looking for fast food, just because when someone's in the market for fast food, it's generally a quick decision. Same thing with custom intent and similar audiences. So it really depends on the business that you're working with. Someone like Wendy's might just want to go 90% affinity and 10% remarketing, and then just try to find people who are fast food diners to reach them with some of their advertisements. So when it comes to Google display ads and the strategy, I think it really depends on who you're running your advertisements for and what the goals are for. If you're trying to drive just sales, just leads, just conversions, that's your ultimate goal, I would recommend spending as much as possible into remarketing. And then the next thing I would do is in-market and custom intent. Now you're gonna see right here, smart display campaign. One of the things you can do is if you just want to give the power to Google and you want Google to find the best audiences for you, you give them the ability to go out and reach an audience that's going to be the most likely to convert for some of these different offers. So if your Wendy's are breakfast picks, if I'm running advertisements based around this, what Google ads is going to do is they're going to try to find people who are going to be the most interested in some of these Wendy's advertisements. And they're going to use the data that they have from people who visit your website, from people who convert on your website and some of the different audience interests and demographics and locations that are generally performing the best for your business. So the more data Google has about your business using your Google Analytics account, using your Google Ads data, Google Ads is able to use this smart display campaign to reach people who are going to be the most likely to convert on your website. Now, me personally, I prefer to use in-market and custom intent audiences. So if you're trying to decide where to spend your $10 per day or $15 per day or whatever it is on some of these audiences, maybe you want to start with a smart display campaign to see how it performs for you. So you really don't have to use some of these different audiences. You could go 10% remarketing, 90% smart display campaign. It really depends on what your goals are and how much you want to test. And me personally, I can't tell you what's going to perform the best. Remarketing will absolutely be the best audience in terms of driving conversions, but between in-market, custom intent, similar audiences, and smart display campaigns, it's going to vary based on each advertiser. So I would recommend testing those first, 
Now, the last thing I would do is target some of these affinity audiences if your goal is to drive conversions. Because just because someone's a fast food craver doesn't mean they're looking for fast food at that time. It doesn't mean they have any interest in Wendy's. It doesn't mean they have any interest in some of these promotions that I might be running. So I generally stay away from some of these affinity, custom affinity, and then detailed demographics just because they're really broad and someone who is a fast food craver might have decided that for Lent they're giving up fast food. So even though you're reaching them with your advertisements, they have no interest in your advertisements right now because they've already given that up. Maybe it's someone who is very picky about what they're eating so you're going to reach a lot of people here that have no interest in your advertisements whereas in market even life events and custom intent audiences you're reaching people who are actively researching or planning so if i come into in market come to apparel and accessories activewear someone in this category is actively researching activewear same with backpacks so if i'm selling backpacks and i choose this then people someone who has been looking up backpacks for sale I can try to reach them with my advertisements so they actually purchase my product. So I like using in-market and some of these different audiences. And the other thing you can always do is with demographics, you can try to target people who are gonna be the most likely to be interested in what you have to offer. So maybe a specific gender you wanna target, maybe an age group, a parental status. They even have household income here, so you can always narrow down your audiences by using demographics. You can also, and something I didn't really talk about here, you can use content targeting. So maybe what you wanna do is, if you're ARS Myrtle Beach, you wanna target some of the local news websites. So what you could do is we can come over here, we can target some placements, and we could just target some of these local news websites near us. So I could just say something like, so I can just search Myrtle Beach News and look through these websites, YouTube channels, and see if I can find anything that's relevant. You could also do a Google search Myrtle Beach News and just take some of these top news sources for people who are looking at the news in their local market. And if I'm ARS Myrtle Beach and I'm looking for people who are going to have some level of interest in plumbing or HVAC services, people who are reading news websites generally are gonna use some of those things, so there is some correlation there. So hopefully that all makes sense. When it comes to display strategy, it's pretty difficult to decide who you wanna target, how you wanna split your budget, but ultimately what you need to do is test and improve. So if I start getting more and more data in here, my Gmail campaign is a complete disaster, then I can come in here, I can pause this campaign, I can stop spending my budget there, and then maybe I can say, okay, well my remarketing campaign's performing well, so we'll add $5 here instead of spending it on our Gmail campaign. And let's just say my smart display campaign is performing much better than in-market and custom intent. So we'll pause this one and we'll come over here and let's just say we spend $25 on this campaign and then we're spending the rest on our remarketing campaign. So over time, what you wanna do is test and improve and that's the best Google display ad strategy I can give you. Test some of these different audiences. I wouldn't recommend going after these affinity audiences if you're trying to drive conversions, but use some of these in market, narrow it down by demographics. You can target content as well. I don't target content too often unless it really makes sense. Maybe what you wanna do is just target some topics. So rather than using placements, come into content targeting, we'll choose topics. And using the Wendy's example, let's just say they just wanna show up on food and drink websites. So we can just come in here to food and drink and we can use this topic to make sure we're also targeting content that's gonna be relevant to Wendy's or food or anything like that. People who are actively looking up food, who are in one of our targeted audiences, then we can make sure they're seeing our advertisements and hopefully converting in the long run. So that's kinda of how I look at display advertising campaigns. Take your daily budget, do some testing in the very beginning, and then move your budget back around based on what's performing the best for you. And again, you wanna make sure you're using conversion tracking so you can see over here when you are spending money, when something does convert, and hopefully you can get to some of these target CPA, target return on ad spend bid strategies so that you're actually focusing on driving as many conversions as possible within your budget. So when it comes to strategy, there's a lot to consider. This is mainly about how to separate your targeting into different campaigns. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. I urge you to look at some of my other display advertising videos if you still have some questions because they might answer some of them as well. This is a one hour completely free video of me setting up a Google display advertising campaign. Some different things to consider as you are setting up your campaign in terms of goals, in terms of what you want to accomplish. So thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.